This is The Wheel Weaves, a Wheel of Time podcast with no spoilers. Hey everyone, I'm your host Annie, and I'm the first time reader going through this series chapter by chapter. As always, there's no spoilers past the chapter we're covering, and that means it's totally safe for first time readers. I'm joined by my co host Brett, who's a longtime fan, and he's guiding me on this journey. We'd like to thank and acknowledge our executive producers, Brad and Aaron Kirkwood, Sean McGuire, Yanis, Albert Lorenzo, Life Blinded Fool, Green Man, Davis Ferreira, Kristen Jordan, and Margaret. And before we get into things today, we just want to thank and welcome Natalie Yost to the Wheel Weaves Patreon team. Thank you so much for your generosity and your support. We really couldn't do this without you. In this episode, we're talking about chapter 16 and 17 of Crossroads of Twilight. Yeah, chapter 16 is the subject of negotiations, and chapter 17 is secrets. Right. Multiple. Ooh. Ooh. And the secret is how I stayed awake <laughs> while reading that chapter. Yeah, there's a few... Okay, Brett. Yeah, okay, okay. I was so pumped. Yeah. I was so excited. Yeah. We haven't heard from Egwene and this camp... We got movement. ...books. Yeah. Literal books. Yeah, yeah. Since we've heard from what's going on here, and it's like they knew they had something I really <laughs> wanted to hear, and they're certainly dragging it out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, it's really funny mm-hmm. because it reminded me of when we did the bad book reviews yeah. for the Winter's Heart mm-hmm. recap. Yeah. And it was the whole money ba- Mr. Moneybags <laughs> Mr. Money RJ. Bags Jordan. Yeah. Just mm-hmm. filling up pages here with all sorts of stuff. Yeah. I was really, really excited. Yeah. It seems exciting, especially the first chapter. Mm-hmm. Seems like, ooh, you guys, we're finding stuff out yeah yeah and we're like advancing past the day of the cleansing oh yeah that's another thing i was gonna say Mm -hmm. we're finally in a new day we are yeah there are some positives here guys Mm -hmm. we have some positives there there is some stuff and here's something exciting i have a new laptop stand you do yeah that is exciting it's super exciting because now my laptop is no longer sitting on my lap Uh uh-huh and now it's on a stand raised above my lap so I can sit more comfortably on the couch. Awesome. All right. While re- whilst recording. Yeah. These wonderful chapters yeah. that are very, very long. Yeah. I'm I'm more excited about the <laughs> laptop stand, but there are some things to pull out of here. Okay. I think. Well, you know what? I got into some crazy parts of the internet for my fun fact, so. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I'm just going to preface it by saying if we have any listeners in Alabama... You know, you know. Oh my, really? Okay, yeah, it's gonna get it's gonna get interesting. So we have another reference to weevils in this chapter. <gasps> weevils. Mm-hmm. Now you might I recall. I was actually hoping, kind of, that you would talk about weevils. With that sarcasm, no, right? No, that that can't no, be no, serious. No. I have in my notes later. What's a weevil? Oh. I really don't know. I feel like you're messing with me, and now I'm really excited about this. <laughs> I'm not. I'll show you. When okay. you get there, I'll show you. It's written. What's a weevil? Okay. Well, I okay. I wanted to know, because okay. my brain thinks weasels. But sure. that can't be right. Sure. So you might have that thing like, hey, is this actually a real thing, or is this just like a wheel of time thing? Anyways, so we actually got a reference in Winter's Heart from Elaine that a bunch of Camelin's food supplies were going bad due to weevils. Mm -hmm. And now Egwene is having the same problem, even though they're channeling to prevent the food from spoiling. So what the heck is going on here? Number one. And number two, like I said, crazy stuff on the internet. So. About weevils. Yeah. So first off, what is a weevil? It is a real thing. They're beetles and they're known for their elongated snouts. They're usually very small, about six millimeters and less in length. Oh, okay. Yeah, and there's about 97,000 species of weevils that are known, and they date back to the middle Jurassic period, so about 170 million years ago. So they have been around for a long time. And they are typically considered pests because they damage and destroy crops and stored grains, and a lot of them can fly. So they're actually a pretty big problem in our real world, too. Mm. So... Here's the first weird story. There's a book that was published in 1906, which for the record has some citation issues, but the book is, yeah, it does. It's called The Criminal Prosecution and Capital Punishment of Animals. Okay. And one of the- animals can be prosecuted? 
uh, not just prosecuted, but criminally prosecuted and capital punished. Anyways. Okay. One story tells about a trial that was held against weevils in the 16th century in southern France. Fair. And the proceedings started in 1545 after the weevils destroyed the vineyards of St. Julian. Those assholes. Terrible. So, the court of the, ch- the chair of the court, which I assume is part of the court in France, refused to punish the weevils and recommended that the winemakers avoid divine wrath by repenting their sins, attending three special masses, and paying their overdue teeth to the church. And that seemed to do the trick and got the weevils to go away for about 40 years. Whoa. But in 1587, the weevils came back. No. Mm-hmm. So another trial took place, and that lasted over eight months, with the defense claiming that the weevils were allowed to eat whatever they wanted, and the mayor of St. Julian... Who's pre- hired to defend the weevils? Well, I mean, I don't know. But anyways, so the mayor of St. Julian proposed creating a weevil sanctuary as long as the weevils left the vineyards alone under the threat of excommunication. So... Just... Yeah, anyways. Just get rid of them. But They're here's just the thing. Beetles. Unfortunately, and this is the this is the catch to the story. Unfortunately, there's Is this like fake? I think it's real. You know, the it 1500s sound, were pretty crazy. It really doesn't sound like this is real so, at all. Someone was just like You got to let me You got to let me finish this here. I just this don't is the first this. story. So, unfortunately, there's no record of how this proceeding ended because the final page of the court records appear to have been eaten by insects. Weevils. Possibly. We don't know for sure. Inside inside job. job. Yeah, exactly. You get it. You get it. Okay. The other story. No, no more stories. This is the Alabama thing. Oh. They need to know. She started with that. Anyways. So, if we have any (laughs) listeners in and around the town of Enterprise, Alabama, you know what I'm talking about. There's a statue of a Greek woman in the middle of town, like a marble statue, with her marble arms stretched high above her head, and she's holding up a 50-pound bull weevil so it's a type of weevil it's big and it dates back to 1919 when it was commissioned by an italian sculptor and originally the statue held a fountain above her head but uh the weevil wasn't added for about 30 years but the plaque actually has the same inscription it says in profound appreciation of the bull weevil and what it has done as the herald of prosperity this monument was erected by the citizens of enterprise coffee county alabama well, so what it's kind of weird. What did the bull weevil do to gain such an honor? That's the question. That's the question. And it's kind of weird since the bull weevil arrived in Mexico or from Mexico in 1892. And it's estimated that it's cost the American economy at least $23 billion in losses. So it's actually devastating on crops. Also in Enterprise, Alabama, it's, you know, devastated the economy. So why did they make a statue? So I had to read maybe too much of a Smithsonian article to try to understand all this, but I have the short version of a very long story. So. Well, when are we getting the short version of this fun fact? This is this is the story of why they mm-hmm. erected this bull weevil statue in Alabama. Mm-hmm. So cotton was a primary crop and it made lots of money, but the bull weevil comes in and ravages all the cotton crops and there's widespread damage across the U.S. And then the farmers in Enterprise decided to plant peanuts instead and apparently the bull weevils don't really care about peanuts and then they made a lot of money from that and then the farmers decided to diversify their crops ended up much better off than just planting only cotton so they made a statue to be like hey thanks for teaching us about diversification of crops and there you go bull weevils important to the economy sometimes okay you feel good about that no okay That was much more than I bargained for. That's usually how it goes. All right. So let's get into this, though, because the last time we were here, the other side of the Camelin siege was doing some stuff. Mm -hmm. And then we had David Hanlon dark friending around. True. But what's really important here is that Egwene and that whole crew, last time we saw them, they had launched themselves into Tarvalin territory mm-hmm. via Ginormo Gateway. Yep, huge. And then they sat around for an entire book. Yeah, well, we did, I don't even think we got to see any of that. I think we saw Egwene in a dream yeah. with Elaine. Yeah. Once. Saying like, oh, today's we the day. Got, yeah, or we just got day. here. Yeah. Something, no, I think it was today's the day. I think you're right. <laughs> But yeah, so they sat around. They didn't yeah. do anything. Yeah. They weren't even doing anything. But we're here. But we're here. 
Chapter 16, the subject of negotiations. Mm. Now, the chapter symbol's the bull because Gareth Bryn is here. Yeah. And we talk to him. A prominent role in this chapter. Well, okay. So, we're in an Egwene perspective. And now Egwene is at the riverbank outside of Tarvalin, and she's looking across... Yeah. At the tower and feels a longing for home, but it's not the two rivers and it's the tower. But here, here's the thing, Brett. I'm going to save you some time. Okay. Because this is a running theme. Oh, yeah. For the next two chapters. The right. amount of time she thinks of the two rivers as not being her home. Yeah. And she's come so far from the innkeeper's daughter and all of that goes on and on and on and on. And this is the only time I'm going to talk about it or mention it. Okay. I'm not going to talk about it again. That's fair. Because I don't care enough. Yeah, it comes up it a lot. It comes up a lot. It's a yeah. theme. Well, in case you forgot, because it's been books since we heard of her, like anything that she's doing, we're back inside her head. we got to get back in that Egwene vibe here. Okay. Yeah. So she pulls out her little spyglass and yeah. she's looking at the North Harbor area. Yeah, I was going to say we should probably take a quick look at the map so we know what Tarvalon looks like because that's important to everything that's happening here with all the planning and the siege stuff. Mm, so you okay. got Tarval on the island. Yes. You've got six bridges, three on each side, the left and the right side. Mm -hmm. And then you got the North Harbor and the South Harbor. Mm -hmm. And she is looking at the North Harbor. Okay. Yeah, that's the one with like the big chain across it that she's like staring at. There's a whole thing about it. I bet it, there's so. a chain across the South Harbor too. Yeah, yeah, there is. But that's also a bunch of this chapter. So yeah. Okay, there we go. Mm-hmm. I think the main point is that the harbor area is pretty well protected by Tarvalin. Yes, and yeah. And that's not great for Egwene. Yeah, and like you were saying, with the chain, that's because Tarvalin's in control of it. So if anyone's not... A... I was actually going to do a fun fact on the chains situation, like what that actually is, because that's mm, a real thing. Sure. But it's to block off ships from actually yeah. passing without you saying, yeah, you can come through. Yeah. Like, technically, you could squeeze a rowboat underneath, but that's not really a thing that's going to be helpful. But then there's all these tower guards who'll just, like... Exactly. Just shoot you or something. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably a thing if, like, one person well, like went a on a rowboat. Well, they bow and arrow because they don't have guns, but... Yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, Egwene is with Gareth Bryn, and they're watching as seven ships are coming down the river really fast. Yeah. Now, Egwene has some thoughts about how she could destroy them, <laughs> but she won't, mm -hmm. even though she technically could set them on fire or sink them or blow them up. But she won't. But she won't, because that would be, quote, using the power as a weapon, and unfortunately, she can't be doing that since she's living as though yeah. she's taken the oath. So she can't blow up the ships. Shoot, she should. But she wants to, but she shouldn't. Uh, can't, won't. Okay. Could, doesn't. Shan't, but won't. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Should, but shan't. That's yeah. it. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I mean, this is, again, where we get the whole Bryn explanation, because we have Egwene oh. watching, but Bryn explaining to us, the reader, what the heck is happening. Yeah. So, big chains blocking the harbors, and there's like seven or eight or nine that typically come through real fast. They got to keep out of range up because the river is pretty wide but you got to keep out of range of the bows and you got to go really fast to try and get into Tarvalin and the, all the ship captains are timing it properly because Tarvalin is only letting in x amount of ships at a time just in case which is like half of the explanation just in case Bryn tries to sneak a bunch of soldiers onto these ships they have to like clear inspection okay so that's the entire premise of what's happening okay yeah. Now, Egwene gets annoyed seeing these ships steadily streaming into Tarvalin day after day because each cluster of ships is bringing hundreds of soldiers into the city for the Tower Guard yeah. since being a soldier pays the big bucks. It does, at least better than a or farmer. Or at least some bucks. Yeah, yeah. And it's kind of funny because she's annoyed, and understandably, but then she's like, ah, men always running into kill people or be killed and be soldiers and like, it's like not really but also you like know. that's that's what we're doing like we are also recruiting yes. for the exact same thing yeah and then Bryn tells her as long as the harbors are open tar Valen will eat better than us and the guard will keep growing elida won't rush out to attack us mm. and it will come to an assault in the end yep like we have to attack the city if we're going to take tar Valen, we have to go we have to attack that's right so Right now, Gareth Bryn wants him and his men to be put inside the walls. Yeah. 
via gateway. Yes. And then he promises he can take Tarvalin yeah. because it'll be surprise attack. Because right now we're pretty sure that Elida and the Tower I Sedai have no knowledge of gateways. Yeah. They might have some inkling. There might be some rumors about it, but until it's verified, they can't be sure and they don't even really know what that is or what it does or how it works. Yeah. And, and so like hypothetically too, just to kind of talk about the surprise attack point with the traveling, because I mean, we do know Alviarin has traveling because of Masana, right. but that different. wasn't, she, yeah. it is different, but we do technically know that some of the Aes Sedai definitely probably know about traveling. But the whole point is surprise attack is going to be better no matter yes. what. Even if you, if you're doing if you're being surprise attacked by gateways, like you're on the defensive, it's not going to go well. That's right. Yeah. Now, Gareth Bryn says it won't be clean, but he can take the city for Egwene, and fewer will die than if we wait long, long, long time and have a fight anyway. Yeah, and like what happens if the traveling does come out? There's a funny little side plot, too, with Egwene's thoughts about how Bryn knows about traveling, and she's annoyed at him because he's the worst he's of like, all the use people it, use it, use who it. wants to use it. But it's like that's literally his job as a general is to use all the tools in his tool basket to get the job done that you want. Especially tools that we have that the opposition they don't have. doesn't have. Yeah, that's a huge advantage. He's like, we can do this right now. We could have done it. Like, weeks ago, months ago, probably. Well, like, they've been here for two weeks or something like that. Yeah, like yeah. There's a, some sort of timestamp, but... So here is where I say, yeah, do that. Mm-hmm. Because then we have no need for the rest of this dumb chapter. <laughs> it could have been like, okay, let's go. Because I hate this chapter. Yeah, I okay. thought it was going hey, that's strong to be words. very... I know. I don't love this chapter. Okay, that's better. I just thought it was going to be so much more interesting. Yeah, yeah. I thought... Came real close. Came real close to being super interesting. Mm. And then fell a little bit short. Oh, this would be so interesting. Yeah. (laughs) I just want that so bad. Yeah. And I know that you had to probably blow up some of the tower, but like Elida literally did that. Yeah. There was tons of fighting within the tower. And look, the tower is still freaking standing there. That's another of the themes in these chapters that Egoyne thinks about. We can't because I don't want to break the tower. Oh, no. It can't come to fighting on the streets of Tarvalon. But it's like, it already came to that. That's why you're all not in the tower right now is because it came to fighting in the because streets. Because it came to fighting. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, according to Egwene, alas, that'll be a no. Mm-hmm. Can't and do it. And she tells Bryn that the tower has to be kept whole for the last battle and a whole bunch of stuff. It's very dramatic. Yeah, she's yeah, like... Yeah, if the White Tower dies, then Hope dies. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we must stand between the world and the Asherman. It's like, really, you and guys? This clearly <laughs> has been an argument that they've had before because Bryn's like, listen, lady. <laughs> yeah. This is what we need to do. And she's like, no. You're not going to be able to be Amerlin. And then what happens to me? He's literally under like a death sentence if they well, lose. and... If you're just not going to listen to your captain general on yeah. tactics, then, like, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. No, I get it. I get it. It's tough. I kind of see both sides of it. Okay. I'm more in favor. Okay, like, I- okay, listen. Yeah. Do we even want Egwene to be the Amarlin? That's turning into the whole Elaine <laughs> thing, right? Does she need to be? Do we really want uh, this to be? And I mean, like, yes. I, I firmly want Egwene to be Amarlin str- more strongly than I want Elaine to be queen. Okay. Okay, all right. However, yeah, this is annoying. Yeah, this is annoying me a little. <laughs> yeah, I do. I yeah. do see her side. People are gonna come out. Yeah, Gwen is doing a really good job here, considering the position that she has been placed in. Sure, she's doing the best that she thinks she can. Yeah. Yep. And she has a lot of really good stuff going on, mm-hmm. which we'll get to. Some of the good stuff is happening. Yeah. I just am a little bit more going guns a blazing. Yeah, but person. I mean and that's And I know and I know that's never actually the answer. Probably. But that also it gets messy too, right? Because then you're like channeling warfare in the tower. That can get really messy really quickly. And sure, Bryn's pretty confident that he and his soldiers can win, but Let's throw them up against a bunch of Aes Sedai who are now, what, in fear for their lives? Are they channeling? Are they killing people? When you people? actually think about what it would be like, I think what needs to happen is we need to sneak a like, surprise attack. Yeah. Almost in the same fashion that Elida did. 
Yeah. You know? Yeah. Where you literally show up outside the Admiral in seat. Yeah. Yeah, travel to her study. Annihilate her. To kidnap her. Kidnap her. Or annihilate. Annihilate works too. Okay. Okay. Here's the thing. Let's pretend. So we're going to get into all the negotiation stuff in a little bit. Sure. And most of this chapter, we Let's can... just run through some Danny hypotheticals of how you would handle yeah. this. <laughs> okay. Because most of this chapter is just talking about some shit that, like, potentially, like, might happen. <laughs> and it's just kind of... Like, whatever. Blah, yeah. blah. Oh, like, let's look at the countryside a whole bunch. Yeah, yeah. Right? And then I said I squabbling at each other. Yeah. There, I summed it up. So, <laughs> you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> you know, there's... Okay, no, that's fine. There's okay, go. There's hardly more. There's... Okay, We'll go. get to yeah. it, I know. But let's say, yes, we do want to negotiate. You know what would be way better for negotiations? If we go, we kidnap Elida, bring her back to our camp. Yeah. And then we have negotiations on our terms. Okay. Like yeah. if we go into the tower, we've already lost ground. We've lost the home field advantage. Okay. Right? Okay. So there's a there's a whole thing where you're not supposed to kidnap the other side captain person when you're in negotiations. Why? You're not supposed to do that. Why? Uh it's frowned upon. I mean okay. I just need yeah. So but home ice advantage that's what I want. The funny part, too, is even though Egwene is going to, in a little while, once we get to it, say, yeah, let's do the negotiations. It's not really. She doesn't want to. It's a stall tactic. Yeah, it's stall. For one of the secrets, which is how... Oh, right. There's literally... Yeah, we're, we're, we're just, like, never going to find that out. Yeah. yeah. It's like, okay, stall them Books for as long the... as possible, and then we'll come back to it at some point. Okay. And as we say around here... <laughs> 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 oh, no, that's not the end? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, we have a little bit more. A little uh, bit more. I, I think we just summed it up pretty good. Okay. That's pretty much it. Yeah. I mean, pretty close. It's Anyways. interesting, but it goes on. Yeah. All right. But let's leave We're the riverbank now. We're going to leave the riverside. <laughs> okay. Okay, but first, during that whole time, I finished my glass of wine. Yeah, okay. And I'm going to need more wine for the rest of this. So let's take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Okay. And we're back, and we're going to get into them leaving the riverside. Yeah. So we have about 200 light cavalry. Yeah. Now, can you tell me the difference between a light cavalry and a heavy cavalry? Sure. Heavy cavalry would be like warfare, where, like armored up, like heavy. Oh, okay. Going into a charge and battle. Light cavalry is like soldiers on horses who have more mobility. Especially since they're kind of like in a wooded area, feel like okay. we're not charging into battle here. Okay, so we yeah. have a bunch of them with us right now. Sherry M. Yep. And six more Aes Sedai and their warders yep. are with us here. The ones who they are are also important to the plot line here. So we have Sherry M plus the other five OG Saladar people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, those are the ones who are all sworn to Egwene now. Yes. And also Nassau who was the Aes Sedai who got roped into the Lan Morel situation. Yes, the healer, the yellow. Yeah, so she's also here. So these other six plus Sheriam are the ones who are all sworn to Egwene. Okay, now yeah. full disclosure, I did not write this list of Aes Sedai into my notebook. That's okay. I should have. No, listen, because now I have a list of all these other Aes Sedai, but not these ones. And I just, like, couldn't yeah. care to, so... Yeah, I mean, we, we've we seen them, like, we've known them for quite a long know, time now. I know, their names are still, like, they're kind of familiar, but... Yeah, for the record, Morverin, Morel, Anaya, Bayonin, Carlinia, and then Sheriam. Those are the OG6, and then Nassau. Okay. Yeah. And we get a really big recap of how they all came to be yeah. in this current situation. This is actually new for us, too, though. Oh, what yeah. part's new? Well, kind of new. So I thought I knew all of this. Yeah. So it's kind of it's kind of new. So yeah, I thought I knew it and just forgot it. Okay. And this was a recap. That's honestly what. I'm okay. Saying. Yeah. No. It's it's a little bit. It's a little bit of the old stuff with some of the new stuff mixed in. It's okay. So these people are all sworn to Egwene, and she has thoughts of like, oh, a little while ago, I wouldn't want to be seen with all of them together, but recently. Egwene has accepted the Hall of the Towers and like the sitter's suggestion that she takes on advisors. Mm. So what she said to the people, the seven sisters that are here, she said, hey, I'm going to have in quotations advisors. Make sure that you're the ones who are picked as my advisors. Okay. So right. then they all got their 
like Aja, Sitter, friends to like pick them as her advisors. So that's why they're all here. So that's why she can be seen ah, with them all scheming. in the open now. A little okay. bit schemey. Yeah. I feel like I thought that that already kind of happened and just assumed I already knew and then forgot. Yeah, it's like another layer. So it's fine. Okay. But now Sheriam is going to announce that Sitter Delana. Yeah. When did I know that Delana was a sitter yeah. already? Okay. Yeah, yeah, we knew that. Because that's the Black Aja who's yeah. with Halima, right? Yeah. Okay. She's all yeah. Okay. Keeping in mind at this point, I don't know what day we're on okay. yet. Yep. I don't know that it's you know days after or if because I thought maybe this whole time we're gonna be talking and all of a sudden. Everybody feels the thing. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> the beacon of blazing. Exactly. The beacon of blazing side art, right? Yeah, so yeah. I thought, ooh, is this still, we're still in the same day because. It can't. Yes. <laughs> and I also want to know if anybody noticed Halima leaving this camp, <laughs> not there for this entire thing that's mm-hmm. happening. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. And if she returns. Yeah. Because we know she was there. Yeah. And we don't quite know how it turned out for her. And so I was hoping for some sort of tidbit of something. For sure. Nothing. Doesn't seem like we get that. No. Nope. We do get that Halima is still doing the massaging thing with the Gwen's headaches. Oh, like, yeah. Like, that is still going on. But, yeah, yeah that's, the, that's the big just, thing. Just terrible. Just so bad. Mm-hmm. Ugh. I really, really am hoping that Egwene figures that out or becomes suspicious in some way. You've been saying that for a while. I know, but it'll be so vindicating because this makes her seem so stupid. Yeah. Not that she, not that it, she's stupid for not knowing, but the fact that we know this is happening and she doesn't. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty easily explained away it, by like, like a it, light level of compulsion oh, on her well, brain, I completely though. agree. I completely get it. Yeah. But the fact that she's ignorant to a situation that we see makes us, like, we're yelling at her through our books. Yeah. We want her to know what we know. And she can't hear us. And with that, there's this level of ignorance on, like, Egwene. Mm. And that's hard. Like, I really want her to, I know I keep saying I want her to be smart enough to figure it out, but it would be so vindicating for her to figure that out because she doesn't even know there is something to figure out yet. Yeah. And yeah, I, I need mean, her to start being suspicious of it. Yeah, that would be nice. That's an interesting plot point for me. For sure. Now, there is a couple of uh, important tidbits of information on the Delana situation because apparently one of the big things that Delana has been trying to do is she's trying to demand that the hall makes a formal declaration that Elida is Black Aja. Oh, yeah, Aja. she's been yelling about that for a while. Yes, and anytime she tries to bring it up, it just leads to a bunch of awkward silence, and then everybody wants to be like, ah, we're done for today. We don't want to talk about that anymore. So it is really funny, because we know Delana is Black Aja, and she's clearly under Halima's orders to do stuff. So the Black Aja is trying to get Elida, who we probably know is definitely not Black Aja, right. to be declared as Black Aja. So. right. What's the what's the game plan? Just to like throw a friggin' wrench in the you know, so it's a question it is of like a why question. of why right? Okay, yeah. hold on. Okay, so I wanted to consult my notebook because yeah. it turns out when I do take notes, it kind of matters sometimes. And like maybe I should <laughs> have actually maybe I'll go back at some point and take notes for this. But I have the confirmed Black Aja as discovered by the Black Aja hunters. Okay. From the prologue of Crossroads of Twilight, and I was wondering if any of them were implicated with Alviarin or if Delana was mentioned at all. Mm-hmm. And the answer is no. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. The ones who were were Talene, Galena, Tamila, Atuan, and potentially Pratali or something like that. Yeah. But yeah. then also confirmed Black Aja is Katarina. Mm-hmm who was the red Aja, but also black, at Dumai's Wells, yep. who was rescued from the Aiel camp. And then we learned that she was at some town, yeah. cheesy town. Cheese town, yeah. Just yeah. outside yeah. of yeah. Tarvalin. With Gawain. With Gawain. Yeah. Okay, now we're not quite at the point in just a, a minute here, another paragraph or two, Egwene thinks about Gawain. She does. And it's funny because 
when we were at the river and she sees a bunch of boats. Yeah. I really thought they were like heading to her because I thought it was boats coming like to the shore, back and forth from Tarvalin. Gotcha. Like to the shoreline. Yeah. And I was initially a little bit confused, which isn't new for me reading. That's fair. And I thought, oh, where's Gawain and those Aes Sedai who are like going back and forth via boat? Yeah, yeah. And I don't know the timeline on that. Mm -hmm. I don't know the timeline on this. And so that's pretty interesting. Yeah. Well, as far as we know, Gawain was just basically laying low because it's sort of winter and he can't really get anywhere. And in his perspective, he was like, oh, dang, huge army just showed up. So that's crazy. (laughs) But no time for that now because we're hanging out in Cheesetown. Yeah, and there were a lot of Aes Sedai there. There were, yeah. They're if all the ones. anybody's interesting, that was Dorlin. Do- yeah, Dorlin, yeah. Dorlin, the sleepy, cheesy village. Yeah, yeah. Well, and those are all the Aes Sedai. Who were rescued from Dubai's exactly. Wells with Gawain. With Gawain, yeah. Hmm. All very interesting. Yeah. Gawain with a bunch of Aes Sedai. Okay, let's go. All right. Back into it. Right. Now, Delana wants to speak with Egwene. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And. <laughs> It's important. And it must be private. And it must be private. (laughs) Plus, we get some information on how Delana has been acting as a sitter, but we already talked about all of that. Yeah. So, Egwene agrees to ride and talk in private, which really seems to annoy Sherianne because she doesn't like being excluded from many of Egwene's meetings. And why? Because she's the keeper, but she really wants to be in charge. Mm, you're forgetting a really important uh, situation oh, we saw. No. You know, I would forgive you. It was only two books ago. Ugh. Okay, here we go. Path of Daggers, Chapter 16. We got a Sherry M perspective, and Sherry M ducks into her tent, and she doesn't have any time to realize that she's not alone, and she's shielded and flung down on her bed, and oh. then a corner of the blankets are wadded into her mouth, and her clothes burst off of her body, oh my gosh. and then a mysterious hand strokes her head and says, You were supposed to keep me informed, Sherry M. That girl is up to something, and I want to know what. And then in Sherry M's thought, she thinks it takes a long time to convince her questioner that she'd already told everything she knew, and that would... Never, and she'd never hold back a word, not a whisper. And then when she's finally left alone, she curls up to whimper from her welts and thinks she wishes she had never in her life spoken to a single sister in the hall. So, Sherry M is supposed to be spying on Egwene. Mm-hmm. And now there's things in private happening. Yeah, she doesn't like when things are kept from her. Right. Not just because she's keeper, but because it seems like... She's supposed to be keeping tabs on Egwene. Right. And it doesn't sound like Delana was the torturer. No. Because Sherry M wouldn't be worried. Yeah. About Delana having a meeting with Egwene in private. That's true. <laughs> mm, That's so true. somebody else in the hall? Possibly. Possibly. Like, absolutely. Mm. Very possibly. Or Halima. Right. That's the other one. Because she's like legitimately killing people in the camp. Yeah, I mean, that's possible, too. It, it, the weird part is, like, whole. Oh, I've never, like, I wish I hadn't spoken to a single yeah, sister in the in hall. The hall yeah. And what does that mean? So, yeah. I mean, we know disguises are a thing, but it's it's pretty mm, hard to say. That seems a little. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you for that. Yes. Tidbit. Anyways, Sherry M. Okay. So now Delana starts up by saying super casually, oh, some people think you're going to bond him as your warder. Some think you already have. (laughs) Yeah, I love this. I haven't had one myself in a while, but just knowing that you have a warder is super comforting if you choose the right one. Right. And Egwene just like gives her a raised eyebrow because she's like, what? What What are you talking about? Lord Gareth is like, I'm not bonding him. Yeah. He's my captain general. That's why I'm talking to him. Yeah. Well, that's that's the Lana point is she's like, oh, everyone thinks yeah. that you're going to bond Gareth Bryn because you're spending so much time together. Unusual. Although, I have heard worse suggestions. Well, and it's funny because Delana says that would be a bad idea that to do that. That would piss off Swan. Well, would it? Would it, though? Would it, though? She's, like, trying to gauge or that relationship. Or would she be grateful? Like, what? that's a weird That's a weird relationship, right? Everyone's weirded up by oh, that. Oh, tell me. It's she's like, Egwene, like... not the person to ask about Swan's relationship because she doesn't friggin' know. Well, no. And it feels like Delana wants to start off on this, like, casual note. She's, like, trying to gossip almost. Yeah. And then she's like, by the way, 
here's the real news. Yeah, not just that she, stuff. Yeah, she wants it to come across super casual gossipy, mm-hmm. especially the news that she has later. She wants it to yeah. feel gossipy. You gotta open with this information. Right. This this is also where Egwene has the thought about Gawain. Gawain yeah. as her warder, but who knows where he is. Who knows? Either on his way to Camelin or in the tower. Wrong. Nah. All right. Mm-hmm. Where is he? Well, it depends. On That's the answer. where he is? Well, it like... depends on what the timeline was when we oh, yeah, okay, see him okay. in the cheese town. Yes, yeah. Is he just hunkering down there still? Still eating cheese. <laughs> or has there been new news? Breaking news, breaking development in the story. Okay. And maybe he's ridden off somewhere, either to the tower or to Camelot. Yeah. Where, I was going to say, where should he go? Where do you want him to go? Where do you think he's going? Pick one of those. I think he's going to stay put as long as he can because he's boring. Okay, where should he go? Camelin. Okay, where does he go? <laughs> Tar Valley. <laughs> good. That Nailing was fun. this. That All was right, fun. that's good. Okay. That was fun. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's like the don't think, just answer. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so then Delana goes on this like rant, gossiping more, blah, blah, blah. And Egwene isn't really biting. She's just going, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And yep. then Delana isn't done talking yet because now she has some advice about the sitters and the Aja heads or something like that. Yeah. And Egwene doesn't really know what Delana is trying to get at because literally everyone is trying to manipulate her. So she's just like, yep, uh-huh. Yeah. And Amarlin should listen to everybody. And then she intentionally calls her daughter just to piss her off. And it's kind of funny. And it does seem to kind of work. Yep. Yeah, so the the things that Delana is saying is important because of what happens next, but she's bringing up the fact that there are Aja heads, and then there are the sitters, yes. who are not necessarily the same, and if she listens too closely to one or the other, then she's going to end up making enemies in the other side, other Sure, groupings. which is like, cool, Delana, thanks. Yeah, well, that's literally... Thanks, as a sitter, yeah. thanks for your advice, That's right? That's, like, literally what Egwene says. She's like, mm-hmm, I should listen to everybody and then make an informed decision. That's my job. Thank you. So, I mean, it is good. I could probably hear my paper shuffling because I just had a thought... Yeah. ...about these notes that I wrote in my notebook about the Aes Sedai in the tower who are... Doing a bunch of shifty business. That's right. And what was that shifty business? It was the fact that there's a bunch of heads who have been newly raised, mm-hmm. who are much too young and inexperienced to be in their position. And in this chapter or the next, yep. Egwene at some point thinks it's weird how many of her heads of yeah. the Ajas that she well, knows And like the of, sitters and like stuff too. Like in this camp. Yeah. Are, like, way too young. Yeah, it's the same, same situation. It is same. Yeah, and Swan is actually the one who points it out because Swan's like, hey, I'm noticing a pattern. I don't know what it means yet. And Egwene's like, mm, okay. Right. It's okay. really, it's kind of more Swan's deal, I would even maybe say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's definitely, like, a yeah. heads of the Ajas versus newly raised sitters, all sort of conspiring and not just on one side or the other of this yeah. white tower split. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, there's one other interesting thing, too, that Delana mentions, and she says that initially they were thinking that Swan was the one who was, like, advising Egwene too well, but now the most likely culprit seems to be Sheriam. Oh. So Delana's kind of pointing out, like, ooh, maybe it's not Swan, because turns out, like, maybe Swan's got other issues and she's not your secret advisor. Maybe it's Sheriam who has a little bit too much pull with you. Right. Which is which is not true, but... I know. I know. And Delana's just basically saying anything and everything here at this point. Yeah, and we can be suspicious because we know she's Black Aja, so... Well, she obviously has her motive for anything that she says or does. Mm -hmm. Evil. Yeah. Evil stuff. And also, there's a possibility this literally has nothing to do with Black Aja business. That's true, dude. And she's just like a (laughs) gossiping bee. Yeah. (laughs) D's being a giant bee, yeah. Honestly, it could be. That's... Kind of what it feels like. <laughs> it totally like could she be. she has her own needs and wants yeah. for things to go the way... Like, she is a sitter. Whether or not, like, yeah, she has Black Aja orders and stuff, she also could still want things to go a certain way within yeah. this group. Very much so. So, yep. I mean, it's everything's it could, on my and mind. And it's, it's Robert Jordan, so it could be any of those uh, or none of those. Or none of them. Yeah. <laughs> 
All right, so here's the thing that Delana clearly has wanted to bring up. It finally gets there. She tells Egwene that she might want to ask what everyone is thinking about negotiations with Elida because apparently the subject has come up a few times in the hall the last few days. Mm -hmm. And she names names. Yep. So, and that's the funny thing. There are a bunch of names of people who some we've heard of. We don't really need to know any of them. They'd all been sitters before the tower was broken, and they're kind of divided between the Romanda Lelaine uh, factions. Oh, for sure, yeah. But there's no other real important information on who these people actually are. Right. Yeah. Just for, like, you, it, it's, it doesn't matter right now. Right. And then, just as a side note, we find out that for the last half a week... Everyone has been very preoccupied talking about the impossibly long eruption of the power and what it means and what it caused and everything. And so yep. that, I guess, was like... That's a five-day five timestamp from the cleansing, yeah. And I went, oh, okay. Yeah, we're moving forward. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so now, apparently, yesterday, Egwene was able to convince the Hall that it's probably safe for a small group to travel to the location of the channeling event. Yeah. To get information. But they're still waiting for that group to return. Yeah. So. There's a funny little side story here too because Lelaine and Romanda don't seem very like, you know, not necessarily happy, but they don't really care too much about this like little search party that's going on because they're saying, hey, it, what happened was really far away and whatever's done is done now. And we're probably not going to be able to learn anything. But even if we learn anything, we're not going to be able to do anything about it. And it was probably forsaken. So like. You know, there's nothing we can do, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. Right? You know what'll be super interesting is when they get there and if anybody has any sort of geography knowledge, they're yeah. gonna be like, Isn't Shatter Logoth supposed to be right there? Yeah, it's like, whoa, what's and that? And it's just gone. <laughs> what's this crater? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, maybe. And I mean if some browns go, yeah. They'll be very interested. What if they find that little piece of garbage? Jordan oh, I'm Co sure they absolutely <laughs> took everything with them. It's like when you're at a campsite, you 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 leave it like you found it. Yeah, except for all your Clean garbage, it. you leave it there for other people to find. No, no that's not what no, you do. No, okay, no. okay. You're supposed to take it all. Oh, with you take you. take it with you. Take gotcha. it with you. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Or leave it in the fire pit. <laughs> <laughs> that happens too. Yeah. You think that they left the bits of terrain real? Just yeah, it's just a hunk of garbage now. Like, who cares? <laughs> Uh, no, I'm sure they took that with them. Okay, all right. I'm still waiting, though. I really, really am still waiting to get... I get maybe in this book we're not going to get any sort of huge action. <laughs> you throw it in the towel and we're just over the halfway mark. You're like, ah, I call, I call it quits, yeah, whatever. I'm just like, yeah. it just feels like we're still literally building up. Yeah. It's just hard for me to believe that like anything is actually going to really be resolved or happen, which is fine. That's fine with me. But I do want some tidbits about like Rand and Nynaeve. Sure. I want to hear from the Black Tower after this, like, that's a faction I want to hear from after uh, yeah, Sidene is like, Yeah, let's, let's get their opinion let's on this. Let's get their, let's, you know, feel what's going on. And then also, I want to hear from some Forsaken. Mm -hmm. Some after <laughs> tidbits, you know? I just want, I just want some little morsels, some I get tasty it. morsels I get it. Just of a little bit. Just, just a little bit. Because I'm not getting enough information yeah. out of this, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to play catch up on everybody we didn't hear about really in Winter's Heart. Yeah. So. Okay. So now Egwene decides to deal with this whole negotiations with Elida business right now. Yeah. So she calls the sisters over with a sharp call mm -hmm. and they all ride over in a little cluster. And so Egwene tells Delana to repeat what she said. And then Sherry M says, that's madness. Nobody can believe negotiation is possible. And then we get this like squabbling. Yes. Anaya agrees. So, okay. So Sherry M and Anaya are blue. Yeah. So like that makes sense that neither of them want negotiations, negotiations to even be on the table. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. now I'm recognizing I do need to write all of this down just for how useful these notes were. Sure. From early in this book yeah like knowing who people are knowing who people it's are it's important for the conversation all of this make why sense. are they reacting the way they're reacting why okay. is the gray saying hey maybe Let's we negotiate. should negotiate i'm so good yeah. at negotiating right uh-huh we'll see that's <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Anyway, most of them call Elida irrational. Obviously, no one's going crawling back. Yeah. And then from Delana's expression, Egwene thinks that this is exactly the response she was hoping for because nobody here wants to make any deals with Elida. Yeah. And at this point, it's hard to say what Delana's... And, and again, like, it's tainted information because we know she's Black Aja. So does the Black is Aja, she if she's like, working off of that... I, you know what? I kind yeah. of want to have it. I don't even really know. But I want there to be some sort of chaos to make the Aes Sedai implode. Like, if I'm forsaken let's yeah. say masana and halima at this point are sort of in cahoots because yep. halima's infiltrated this side masana's, masana's clearly on the boy on tower the, clearly yeah. on the other side masana's talking with alviarin and halima's talking with delana what if there's some sort of like let's make all of the Aes Sedai implode yeah and if we call elida a black aja that's just going to confuse alviarin yeah more than anything like, you know, I just, it just seems like there's going to be crazy chaos. Like, the more the Black Aja gets involved. For sure. With both sides here. But I'm, that's exactly it. Like, what's the best hypothetical situation for the Forsaken coming up to the, the last battle is not having a functional White Tower. Oh, yeah. Like, that's the best well, case scenario. Well, here's the thing, though. If they had just left them alone. Yeah, they can do it themselves. <laughs> then, like, they wouldn't be functional yeah. against the Dark One anyway. Well, it's funny, because we actually, <laughs> we talked about this a long, long, like, books and books and books ago, but the whole point of the tower fracturing is also looking at, like, hey, you don't want to tear the White Tower down completely, because if you destroy it completely, then something else will come up in its place to fill the void. Yeah. The power vacuum. But if you keep it like just functional enough, then it's just like terrible. But that's kind of like how it was functioning when we first started this series. But now it's like, slightly worse. Str- yeah, is it though? Because now we have like a thousand novices. Now you're now you're. Oh, that's true. Nine hundred eighty-seven, I think it was. Anyways. Yeah. But that's the point. Is eh, I think in the you end, devil too much. <laughs> maybe because if we just left them alone, they're so terrible. Yeah. It just. It would, would have been terrible. Yeah. Would, would on you, their own. Would you say that the... Like uh, the Green Aja just like never practicing any sort of battles with the power just is like baffling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. But what is interesting here is Bayonin. Yep. Who's been riding in silence during all of this squabbling. Who's a gray. Finally says, why should negotiations be off the table? Yep. And this catches everyone by surprise. And she says to Delana... We're both gray. We negotiate. We mediate. Elida has stated her conditions and they're unreasonable. But that's a typical start of these cases. We can reunite the tower if we talk. Yeah. Negoti- you start unreasonable and then you go back and forth, back and forth, and then Tell you make it's a deal. Reasonable. It's great. And Delana snaps at her and is like, uh, no, we also judge. And Elida has been judged. Yeah, it's crazy. But it's like, hey, Delana. Yeah. Now, they all start arguing until Egwene cuts them off and is like, Hey, Bayonin, are you willing to open negotiations with Elida? And then she corrects herself and she's like, Well, the sitters, the sitters in the, the tower, because Elida's not going to actually do anything. And then Bayonin is like, Yes. Okay. And Egwene says, Well, do it then. Sure. Yeah. And then that causes the other sisters to break out in squabbling, but Egwene ignores all of it. Yeah. Now, a little side thought that Egwene has. Egwene's talk with Swan and has told her that if, if it could save the tower, if it could, that she would surrender to Elida. But that's crazy. But it won't save the tower, so she's not gonna. Right. It's like, that's that's now, the worst. Yeah. Egwene lays out her orders for negotiations and says the only term she'll accept is Elida resigning and going into exile. All right. And Bayonin and some of the others are a little bit shocked by this demand. Which is kind of crazy. But it might be because they're not actually good at, like, critical thinking about this yeah. kind of thing. It's like, that's been your entire thing, this whole yeah, rebellion. of course that's of, the demand. Like, yeah. Of course. It's actually a nicer demand than being, like, head. Chop her head off. Chop her head off. In that's what we everybody. want. Stilled yeah. and head chopped off, not just, like, exiled. Come yeah, on. exactly. Now, Egwene tells them it's time to get back to the camp, and that's where this chapter is going to end. Yeah, there we, di- we did it. We did talk about negotiations, I guess. Yeah. They're on the table. Sort of. Yeah, it sounds like we're going to go do it. 
Yeah. So at this point, it does sound like we're going to negotiate. Next chapter, it's like a little bit of backpedaling. There's secret negotiations that don't mean anything. Okay. I'll point it out. It's brought up a bunch of times. I know, I know, I know. But here's the thing. Number one, people suck. True. Number two, people suck at doing what they're told to do. True. Good point. And people suck under pressure. That's true. So. Who knows? Yeah, that's the plan. Like, go there and stall and not give any secrets away and don't actually make any deals. <laughs> but here's what's going to happen. They're going to go there. Oh, they're no. They're going to give all the secrets away and they're going to make some deals. Oh, no. Okay. But that is the. Oh, my God. Or do you have the foretelling, that's too? That's <laughs> my reveal for the end of next chapter, not this one. Are you a psychic? I yeah. think so. Okay. I do. Oh, I also see Brett getting me oh, no. a sandwich in my future. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's a good reference for next chapter. Yeah, okay. That's great. All right. Let's take a quick break and we'll be right back. Okay. Here we are back to talk about chapter 17. Yeah. Secrets. There are a few secrets. Secret secrets are no fun. Secret, secret, hurt someone. There you go. There yep. it is. Nailed yes, it. Yes, it is. Okay. And the chapter symbol is the two ravens, mm -hmm. which... Isn't that like mm -hmm. dark friend spy situation? I mean, yeah, or dark one, dark, yeah, darkness, yep, evil. No, you're you're absolutely nailing it. Uh, and the entire premise of this is also like the whole Delana situation okay. of the news she's bringing in about everything that's going on because that's like half the discussion this chapter. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and the other half is description of camps. <laughs> so <laughs> inherently evil yeah uh, oh, whoa. Okay. <laughs> figured it out okay all right so we're with Egwene again and once Egwene and that crew gets closer to the camp we get a description of that yeah and delana slips away saying she shouldn't be seen returning with them yeah this was a secret mission secret secret covert yeah. now i had to reread the first two pages a couple times because okay <laughs> it really felt to me like now this was from delana's perspective oh and then i got confused right. when in a page and a half it was actually from a perspective yeah because it's a Gwen's interpretation of what delana was doing yeah because the first sentence of this chapter is once Delana was sure that her noxious seed had taken root, she murmured that it might be best if they were not seen arriving back at camp together and slipped away, blah, 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 blah. And that yeah, sounds yeah. to me like a like, Delana perspective. Like a yeah. Delana perspective because she's like, oh, my noxious seed just took root. Yeah. I'm out. But in fact, right? it's a Gwen who but thinks it's a about Gwen that. Interpreting yeah. all of this as her. Noxious, noxious seed. Say it. Noxious seed. <laughs> That's right. And so... And that... she's not wrong because Delana's by Gaja, so it's totally a noxious seed. And it might, like, actually not be. But it also might it's, not be. It's good It's good that Which Wayne is, is thinking yeah. that, oh, what somebody is saying is not what they're thinking. Yeah. Like, that's great. That's yes, that, absolutely. You're actually spoiling, like, half of the conversation of this chapter. Oh. Talking about what Delana's up to and why she's actually talking about this. Yeah. That is okay. a bunch of discussion. Yeah, well, because Egwene does think that Delana must have planned this whole scenario super carefully. Mm -hmm. And when she's gone, Egwene says to the other sisters, I trust I don't have to ask whether any of you knew that this was going to happen. Yeah. And no, of course and not. They, they had like, no like, idea. No, no, of course not. Yeah. And then Egwene is like, well, the real question is, like, what did she want? Yeah. Yeah. And that is, that's the question. Because they don't know she's Black Aja. We do, but they don't. And that lights the entire conversation about, oh, maybe, maybe Delana's trying to cause tension between the Ajas and the Sitters. Ooh, maybe. Maybe she's, like, making that happen. But again, why? Maybe she's why? trying to make the Ajas fight each other <gasps> for some reason. Why? Why? Oh, my gosh. Why? Who why knows? wouldn't Aes Sedai be scheming at all? Yeah, so and th confusing. Then Morvern's like, hey, 
maybe it's none of that and maybe she's just trying to do some other like personal swaying for some like random oh situation gosh, she no wants way. no i said i would do anything for personal gain yeah. it's like i don't know if you know this but i said i are super petty they're most the worst. of the time they're literally the worst but yeah. in all of this we get a huge recap about halima sleeping in Egwene's tents and yep. Egwene's headaches and stuff Still like that happening, that's what's all that. that's where this happens yeah and now Right now, you already alluded to it, but they're going to discuss their viewpoints yep. on the situation. Yeah. And it's all very common I said I arguing. Yeah. I'm blue. I care about the issues. I'm white. I care about the logic. I'm brown. <laughs> I care about knowledge and common sense. And libraries and such. You know. Yeah. That's literally this entire thing. Yeah. No, no. But that that's it. That's it. If you want to know who's who, like, I don't know. Yeah. I couldn't tell you that, but I can tell you <laughs> what the Ajas care about. <laughs> it's like, once he starts spewing their opinions, it's like, I know and what Ajas are. the only one that I don't quite know the stereotype for okay. is Nisau the yellow. Yeah, she's just kind of lumped in here because like, she's... What do you, like, yellows can't be like, I care about this because of healing. Uh-huh. Like, not really, right? So... Well, and it's kind of funny. Okay. So, and it's funny you say that because Nassau has one of like the most reasonable arguments because she brings up the point like, hey, what happens if we say no to the negotiations and then the rumors get out that negotiations were proposed proposed, and, and, then, then, rejected. and then rejected? And then what happens when people start thinking, hey, what are the long-term consequences? We've been here for like two weeks. What happens if it's two years or 20 years? Because what's even 20 years to Aes Sedai yeah. who live, you know, two to 300 years? Yeah. So then people start getting a little bit skittish. And what happens when someone like turns? Right. Or and then starts they're spilling. all going to start. And it's really easy to get a boat and get back to the tower. Exactly. If that's what you want. Especially since we're now we're so physically close to the tower. It makes it so much easier. Like when we were in yeah, Saladar, yeah. we could pretend like, oh, this is where we live now. But now you're yeah. literally, <laughs> now you're outside the tower. It's like, hey, my old we were, bedroom is there. Yeah. And when we were all hanging out in the camp in Mirandi and we're like, we're marching on the tower. We're doing it. But it was still like months away. Yeah. Yeah. And now it's like, we're physically here. And if I just like go back to the tower, then Things I also. can be good again. Then I also yeah. get my paycheck apparently. Oh. Because that's also something that, you know. Doesn't oh, yeah. doesn't get paid out apparently right now. No, not when you're there. If no, you, no. If you abandon the tower, you don't get your tower paycheck, your Ugh. per diem. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Crazy. Mm -hmm. So, so that's that's the latter half of this chapter. Right. How are we gonna make money? Oh yeah. Yeah. Trinkets. Trinkets and baubles. Really cool. <laughs> really cool ones. Now. Maybe. Okay, let's get Maybe. back to this super oh, interesting, super not boring at all conversation. It's good. And the end result yep. is that talking will buy some more time. Yes. And in a few weeks, Bryn should be able to find the ships he needs to block the harbor. And honestly, Egwene knows, never going to happen. Yeah. Never going to happen. <laughs> okay. And also, so that's also a very important part of the siege that I've I've tried to talk about this multiple times so that once we got here you'd re like really understand yeah, what's going on here. Yeah, good thing I listened to everything you say. Siege warfare. You got to block the bridges. Yeah. You got to block the harbors. Yeah. For the they Caimlin. do not have control of the yeah. harbors. No, they don't. But that's but the they issue. They have control of bridges, right? They have the control of the bridges right now. The six bridges in and out. But it doesn't matter because if you have boats coming in with supplies. It's not helpful. No. So, yeah, you got those big harbor chains, but those are the ones that are in control from the tower. So, Bryn's plan is to commandeer ships and then sink them in front of the harbors to block the way. And it's like, ah, now you can't get in. But Bryn knows there's not never enough gonna ships. Never going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the river's too big. There's not enough ships. It's, it's never going to happen. So, basically, we're, <laughs> we're effed. If, but the I said I don't know that's never gonna happen because they don't talk to the soldiers because that's common because knowledge among dirty the soldiers. And stuff, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And like this isn't a secret among Bran and his, and his army, but the I said I clearly aren't talking. So who really knows this? I mean, Egwene does, but right. So right now it's not going super well. So that's also why Bran's saying, "Hey, we gotta move with the gateways. Let's go. Let's do this thing. Yeah, let's attack." All right. So then we get some more back and forth. 
And Egwene tells the Aes Sedai again that she already stated they can begin negotiations, Mm -hmm. but she tells them to be careful what they say. And we just talked about this not too long ago, but like, don't confirm we know how to travel and also don't accept (laughs) anything. Agree to nothing. Just keep them talking. It's actually a stall tactic. Don't let them know about the ferrets in the tower. Oh, they are. Some already know that. Well, Well, actually, all the sitters. The Black Aja hunters. Wait, wait, wait. I have this. The Black Aja hunters in the tower. Oh my god, I didn't know my notes were going to be so important right now. They okay. know about all the ferrets because that's like the first thing they found out. Before they found out the Black Aja, mm-hmm. they found out like, oh, there's a bunch of rebel spies rebel here. Rebel ferrets. Maydaddy, Bernila, Celestin, and Anne Herod. Mm-hmm. Ah. Yeah. Those are the rebel ferrets that the Black Aja hunters, who are all sitters, mm-hmm. all of them sitters, all know about the ferrets. But it's still secret because they're not bringing it up because no, we can use that. No, but guess who they're going to go talk to? The sitters. The sitters who all know about the ferrets. What a complex web we spin. Okay. I feel like we talked about that last time. We talked about web weavings last time. Mm-hmm. Now I'm even more convinced that before I read the next chapters, I have to write notes on these eyes said I and mm-hmm. what they're doing. Yeah. Because it will... Come back and matter. Mm -hmm. At some point. Okay. If you do it. That's important to me, actually, because I would have no idea. Yeah. How about that? How about that for handwritten pages in a notebook? Pretty good. Are you impressed? Uh, Yeah. I'm impressed (laughs) with myself. (laughs) Okay. Where are we? What's happening? Oh, we're finally going to get back to camp. Right. Everyone's going to go their separate ways. Don't spill secrets. Yeah. Go do the negotiations. And then how... Is, what's her name, Bayonid the Grey, yeah. going to actually feel about going to negotiate, but then being told, actually, don't negotiate anything, just stall. Well, like, she doesn't the, like it. No. We we do kind of get that. Yeah. She's like, oh, oh, no. <laughs> no, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> yeah. But, okay. Now, there's a description of how Bryn has sorted out the army, and mm-hmm. I don't care. About that? Well, okay, okay. Nope, nope. No, 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 I no, 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 please. No. No, please. A little bit. I'm trying so hard to care about these eyes that I, and I cannot care about how the army is sorted. I can't. I can't care about that. I can't make myself care enough. There's a callback. So there is something we got to talk about. <sighs> In the first chapter, Egwene, with her little spyglass, she was noting that there's a little, like, uh, black smoke areas where clearly there are raids going oh, on. Oh, there's things happening on the other side of the tower, on the other riverbank. Yes. Yeah. So there's like raidings going on that are clearly being aided by Aes Sedai because like track the Egwene and Brynn have been trying to track down the raids that are happening, like the merchants and the wagons. And okay. Blah, blah, yeah. Blah. We didn't talk about that. Yeah, that's fair. We didn't okay. talk about it, but okay. we should talk about it because it's a thing that's happening. And clearly there are Aes Sedai who are helping hide these raiders. Because, like, tracks are disappearing, the weather is changing to help disguise the whatever, whatever. So there's some stuff that's happening around the tower, outside the tower, which is why Agwe needs a big escort. Because Elida's not necessarily attacking the rebel camp here, but they're not necessarily doing nothing. They're still putting up resistance to Bryn and the forces here. Okay. It's good to know. Okay. And while you were talking, I remembered that one of the warders, you know, back in the last chapter, when we were getting a bunch of description about each warder and their names and who they were warded to and all of that, one of them had a description that he was graying at the temples. Oh my goodness. And it's been a while since we've had that. What does that mean? That you're slightly aging. Okay. It's not like a... Sometimes no. you're like, oh, that means, you know, evil or dark friend or no, blah, blah, blah. No, no, no. Okay. Like you are starting to gray at your temples. Don't even. Well, you are. I'm just noting. It's just a thing. It's just okay. a way that Robert Jordan describes people. And <laughs> I think it's funny. <laughs> All right. All right. Now, this is where we get the food situation that's not great. Yeah, weevils. And this is where I wrote, what are weevils? Yeah. Okay. And we learned little beetles. That you must... Press charges against (laughs) and excommunicate (laughs) from the church. (laughs) That's great. Oh, yeah. Okay. So now 
But they do the, they do the keeping, and that is kind of funny because Elaine does that on the flower that Rand gives her, mm-hmm. and it's supposed to keep it forever. So there's like a little inside joke with the Aes Sedai. That's not a joke. It's like ah, this is terrifying. Is Sidar failing? Oh, yeah. It's like a right. not joke joke. That's like okay. The the keeping is it possible that the grain that you put a keeping over had a bunch of weevil eggs already in it, mm, wait, and then. Mm. And then they can hatch, even though there's a keeping over it. No, they should they should know about that because it's been established since I the world that they already understand like germ theory, like they understand concepts on a smaller scale of like okay yeah. So I'd say no. Okay, so this is I think something to just take note of and potentially track. Be concerned about food supply. It's not over. No, no, it's, no, 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 okay. no, not food supply. Dummy. Like Sidar not working. Sidar not working. Uh, obviously, <laughs> we should be worried about food supply too. And Egwene is worried I about know. it. I know we should be worried about food supply, but also Sidar you... failing after <laughs> the cleansing of Sidine. But okay, okay, right? you know that's fair. That's fair. That's probably something to take note of. Yeah, I was just gonna say you don't understand anything about the keepings, do you, Marsh? No, I <laughs> okay. do not. I yeah. don't understand anything about anything. <laughs> I can't believe we're 10 books in and I still don't understand oh, anything about anything. Okay. You think I'd understand by yeah. now, right? But I bet you do understand about the reports that Egwene and Sherry M have to look oh, at. Oh my god! Because Egwene is doing a thing. I thought you wanted me to not fall asleep. Well, Swan, Swan was like, hey, you got to do random inspections. And no. Egwene is no, doing I those. I didn't even write any of that down. Yeah. There, but if you can believe it, yeah, we do get more camp description. Oh yeah, and the people that are here. Turns out there's lots of novices, yep. like a thousand of them. Nine hundred eighty-seven. But we only have twenty-one accepted. Right. But that's because we don't have a testing terrangrial tester for True. accepted. Can't can't do that. Can't. Yeah. We can have tons of accepted. I and, mean novices, which is wonderful news. Yeah. There have no. Been, it's fantastic. It's there good. There haven't been this many novices in a jillion years, and even though all the eyes that I are like uppity about it, and they're like, "Well, not all of them are actually going to get to stay." And no, <laughs> there's so many times that they talk about even in this chapter, we're going to get to it right away. Yeah. Let's put them out. It's like, no, we're not kicking anybody out anymore. Yeah, the whole thing is we want to build numbers. That's the whole thing, is we're not kicking anybody out. I think my favorite, like, sub, sub, sub C plot of this chapter is the fact that all the novices are arranged into what are, like, called families Families, now. And there's, like, oh, they're cousins, and it's not necessarily an official term, but then we find out that it's not even the Aes Sedai who made up this family system. It's the old, old grandmother novice, Sharina. And Sharina is the Aes Sedai that Nynaeve had in her accepted test with Hunky Lan riding right, into yeah. Malkir. And Sharina is the Aes Sedai from that vision. And this is this is the same Sharina. Here she is, yeah. And here she is, like, sorting Doing a thousand stuff. novices. Yeah. Because she's disgusted at the disorganization of... Of the Aes Sedai. In the camp, yeah. And she's like, I'm doing my own thing. Families. Organization. Yes. Get in line. Yeah. So. Absolutely. Fantastic. But you jumped ahead a little bit because we didn't get to the part where how we're going to find Sharina in this camp. Right. Because we're not there yet. Because Egwene is going to keep riding through the camp. There's a bunch of people <laughs> she wants to avoid, including Romanda and Lalani. And there's a few sisters coming through gateways at the traveling grounds. You don't skip over this. Oh. Because it looks like these two sisters might have come from somewhere that was warmer than where they are currently. Like an indoors. Yeah, like an indoors. And then she's like, <gasps> maybe they are like secretly going to the tower and they're actually traitors. Well, I mean, Egwene's super paranoid. But, Very paranoid. But it's smart for her to consider that this many I said I, this close to the tower, yeah. are probably... Except that, like, physical distance of the tower doesn't mean anything because if they're going to, like, be traitors, they could be traitors from anywhere with no, traveling. No, it's like, it's almost like Ogier and the longing. Yeah. But the eyes that I, like, physically see the way tower. Even like, Egwene. Yeah. Multiple times. I'm going to skip into my the room theme, there. The theme about all of this 
is the sort of longing for home. That's true. That's and true. And even Egwene feels that the White Tower is home. So what could these other Aes Sedai, who are actually Aes Sedai, actually Aes Sedai. for like jillions of years, <laughs> they had rooms here, they not just like Egwene. Yeah, like actually feel yeah. this. So, but to be fair, apparently these two are Browns, so they were probably just like visiting a, a library. library somewhere. Yeah, there's that too. I feel like Browns are my new favorite. Because Yay. they're so secretly no, not because they're like no, that's because it's me. That's fine. Not because they're funny and daisy and you know ditzy and smart. Totally. But because they're so underhanded and sneaky, they know what's up. They certainly do. Don't fuck with librarians. I tell you, don't okay. do it. No. Okay. No, no, no. But anyway, she's finally gonna get to the tent that she's looking for, and Liana comes out. But wait, and we're gonna have two pages <laughs> of. Liana getting a novice to hold Egwene's horse because there's nowhere for her to tie her horse. And there was like a page of the description of Egwene, of Egwene not having Egwene a place to tie. standing there with her horse. Race. What do I do with and my she's horse? she's like, oh my goodness, I didn't think of this. And then she's like fumbling with her belt pouch because she's trying to get her stole on because no one here would even recognize her. Oh my goodness. As the Amaralyn seat, which is so around at the Black Tower moment. Oh yeah. Like the the parallels here the, are wild. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now it's a it's a Okay, lot. but don't worry. Liana gets someone to hold a Gwade's horse. Phew, and we're like super worried, but it's okay. And you know? then we get a recap on the secret relationship between Egwene, Liana, and Swan, and how nobody knows they're actually best of friends. Yeah. And sneaky, sneak accomplices. Yeah, very sneaky. Yeah. Now, incoming, we have a new list. Of Aes Sedai to keep track of. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. In yep. this tent. In the in this in tent. This in tent, this scene. There are at least I don't know eight <laughs> eight different named Aes Sedai novices and accepted yeah. that we need to keep track of. Um, some new, some old. Yeah, I'm gonna pump the brakes a little bit on that. There's really only like one or two that are actually important. Well, they're right named now. though. I'm telling you. Oh, they're named, but you I'm said I'm telling them. you a list of people we need to keep track of and know what they're doing. Okay. That's the that's the point. You know some of them. Yeah, I know. I said some new, some oh, old. Okay, okay. Just wanna... but mostly all new because yeah, <laughs> okay. I can't keep this information in my brain. I have other things in my life to worry about. Okay, so we have Tiana, who is the mistress, mistress of, of novices. novices. Yeah, and she is watching everyone in this tent with Sharina, who is the old grandmother, old lady. but a novice. Yes. So she's like kind of sort of in charge. She's like inspecting. Yeah. But still a novice. Okay. Now, we have a few sitters here as well. Yeah. So like sitters slash full Aes Sedai. But then also we have other novices. Right. And also like sort of in between because the whole Nicholas situation. So we have a combination of all different rankings of people all doing the same thing. And that's why it's kind of a weird situation. Okay. Yeah. Well, that thing is a new task, yep. which is weaving air, fire, and earth yep. around iron. Either yes. bowls or cups or goblets or whatever. Little trinkets that have been made by the blacksmiths right. very intricately. Yes. Yep. And Egwene thinks about how they're all improving with practice with this weave. But the key is having strength in earth. And besides Egwene herself, there's only nine sisters in the camp. Yep. Two accepted and about two dozen novices who are strong enough to make these weaves work at all. So they're yes. the only ones who are here doing this job. Yeah, yeah. So that's why it's, it's like a combination of the Aes Sedai, the accepted, the novices, and they're all focused, and we get it as like a big reveal, sort of. They're making Quendiar. 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 Heartstone. Heartstone. I was going to say Dragon Earth. Yeah. No. <laughs> Dra Heartstone. Yeah, it's the unbreakable stuff. And then it broke. I mean, in a couple specific instances with, like, the Dark the One seals. seals. Mm -hmm. Different. Different. But the same. Yeah, okay. I mean, yeah, okay, 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 yeah. So, okay. like, a little bit different. So, some of the people here are working on this project more enthusiastically than others. Yeah. And so far, only three sisters, aside from Elaine, have been able to learn how to make Terangriel. That's, like, a That's side... That's, like, a side note. Yeah, side thing. Yeah. 
but none are very consistent. And then we find out that these women here are, in fact, making Quendier. Yeah, that's the reveal. And one of the Aes Sedai here tells Egwene that although it's been a brilliant discovery, she's not happy that they're, quote, making things for sale. Yep. Especially since they have more uses for their time than making these trinkets. Yeah, so this is Salita. Okay. Salita. And my note is, do you like to eat? Yeah, yeah. Oh, if you like eating, well then <laughs> shut up and work. Yeah. Well, this is going to make you money. Yeah. And it matters so you can eat. So you have the same thought process as Egwene because Egwene's like, ah, Salita is the kind of woman who's literally like a noble from Tyr who takes money from her estate but never thinks about how the estate makes money. It's one banana. How yeah. much could it cost? Ten dollars. Yeah, exactly. That's yes. like literally the situation. That's literally written in my notes. Yeah. I wrote that in my notes. And this is where we also <laughs> get the hint of like the Aes Sedai taking their money, their stipend, their yes. whatever you want to call it from the tower and not actually thinking about how the tower makes money. Yeah. And we also know from like past books that Quendiar is a very sought after substance that a lot of people will pay good money for. So it doesn't matter what it is. It's a collectible. It is, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. When yeah. we saw Turak was had a whole cabinet full Whatever of that. Whatever you can find, doesn't matter. Full of that crap. Cups, plates, spoons, all sporks. It. All it's all it. good. It's all, all it's it. all acceptable. It's all good. And so this is the new way we're going to make money is we're going to make Quindia yeah. and then we're going to sell it. Which is also like maybe because there's a lot of secret secrets that are happening in this chapter. <sighs> right. Got to watch out for that. Right. Now... Don't forget that Mogedian was teaching Egwene, Nynaeve, and Elaine yep. how to do things. Yep. And everyone was like, wow, brilliant discoveries, brilliant discoveries. And they were like, uh-huh, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is medium one of but those. This is medium, because Egwene was on her way to figuring it out by herself. Yeah, Mogedian gave hints, gave yeah. Hints because even Mogedian didn't know fully how to do this herself. Yeah. And, Which is totally fair. That's actually yeah. like my favorite, most realistic thing from Age of Legends, like Forsaken, because they don't all—they're not all no. knowing. No, they're yeah. not. They're very much not. But it's like if I was displaced in time and space, and it's like, hey, you're from 2023. You use computers all the time. How do you make a computer? I'd be like, uh, <laughs> uh, there's uh, like a bunch of chips wires and wires. And made. I don't know. There's wires and computers, but like. There's like mm -hmm. electronic stuff and, you know, basically do that, yeah. but better. And then you'll have a computer. Yeah. And then uh, hopefully there's an Egwene who's like, okay, and got hopefully it. hopefully there's some Wi-Fi. <laughs> I, I don't know. know. <laughs> I know how to connect to Wi-Fi, but like, that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. You got a password? Or... Yeah. <laughs> have you tried unplugging it? Yeah, plug it back in. <laughs> okay, good. No, no, that's really funny. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, now we also get a little tidbit that there are some arguments about whether novices should be handling weaves this complex at all. Oh, yeah. But they're all supervised, so it should be fine. Yeah. And okay. also, we know that this is actually how people learn. Yep. By not being stunted in their learning. Yes, like this is a legitimate strategy to teaching. Is this is why Aes Sedai are so weak. It's yep. because you literally stunt their growth. Yes, you don't yep. do the things that you're supposed to. Yeah, yep. it's... Yep. Okay, so after this novice shift, because it's all shift work, right? They they yeah. have shift for their classes. It's not shifts, maybe it's classes. Your class is over here. You got to go to your next class. Yeah. Kind of thing. And sort so of, yeah. This one is over, and there's this whole procession of them leaving, and Egwene thinks about Bodwin mm -hmm. from the Two Rivers, Matt's sister. Matt's sister, yeah, I that's right. Okay. Yeah, Bode, Bodie. I'm not sure yeah. what the nickname would be, but she's here. She's on a rotation making this stuff, but she's still learning her place because she thought used to think she could just like pop in to chat with Egwene whenever yeah. she wants. And this is one of those times with the whole can't. two rivers thing. She's not going to like Egwene's not yes. going to think about. Mm -hmm. You said you weren't going to talk not about talking it. it. Not talking about it. Not talking about so it. Anyways. So Nicola yeah. is another one of the novices <laughs> here that can do this weaving. Yeah. And she pushes back a bit on leaving, but she's... How do you, much do you remember about Nicola? Been told that she shouldn't. Okay, so... Yeah, because, like, Nicola's kind of important here. She's, like, the topic of discussion. She's the hot commodity. Okay, just give me a recap. Okay, so Nicola 
is the one side of the pair of Nicola and Irina, who are the ones who tried to blackmail Egwene, Elaine, Nynaeve, because they were pretending to be Aes Sedai. Uh, and then she was on the boat with them when... With Merrigan. With Merrigan. Slash Mulgedian. Slash Mulgedian, who was yeah. in disguise. Yeah, And yeah. then they're also the two, so Nicola is one of the pair, who also tried to blackmail Nassau and Morel because they found a boat, a, a boat Lan. And then Egwene came into that situation and she was like, get the hell out of here. So they're not technically like sworn to Egwene, but it's not a great situation with Nicola. Plus, Nicola can legitimately foretell, yeah. which is going to be important. And she has the ability to see Taviran. Oh. So Nicola, and she's also very strong in the power. Like she's very, 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 very strong. Like okay. comparable to possibly Egwene. Like we're not exactly yeah, yeah. sure, but she is very strong. Okay. And she has talents. So this is just like a bit of a messy situation with Nicola. Yeah. Because she's also just kind of a butthead. And Sharina's keeping her in her place, but sort of. barely. Yeah. Now, Nicola does run off. And then there's a whole conversation about if Nicola is causing any issues. And honestly, it seems like yes. Because, yeah, okay, so here's the thing. It's not no, but it's Ever it's since yes. she found out she can foretell... <laughs> she's been foretelling <laughs> this is the joke this is the foretelling yeah i see i foretold that you we foretold would be the joke joking yeah about this yeah so she's been foretelling two to three times per day and arena yeah who, uh, isn't that the one who was dressing like brigida yes she's okay. the one who was like super close with brigida and then elaine was getting all jelly because like ah oh, she's like spending too much time with you yeah, it was weird. Yeah. Because yeah. mm -hmm. she's not, she's not a channeler. Because can't channel, yeah. but she just hangs out. Yeah. Right. She's like protectoresque. She's like Brigida, like warder-esque yeah. mm. of, with Nikolai. Okay. So like a weird. Right. Well, I don't know if I even want to say weird. It's just like well, they're a pair. No, yeah, no, they're definitely together. And then it's funny because I actually didn't write it down at all, but I, because I forgot. But now I'm remembering that. There's this whole thing about how Nicola is allowed to have Arena around. Yeah. Because it's better that Nicola and Arena hook up than Nicola hooking up with some soldier yeah. because a bunch of novices have become with child. Mm -hmm. And so they're like, yeah, it's fine that they are together a totally, lot. Because totally. we'd rather that than her being with a bunch of men. Mm -hmm. So There's some maiden philosophy there. But anyways... Yeah. Also, there's the old adage, friends who blackmail people together stay together. Um, hang out a lot. Yeah, as friends. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so since she's been foretelling a lot, Arena has been helping her remember what she said during the foretelling. Because she forgets. She yeah, helps Nicola interpret forgets. them. Because Nicola remembers that she forgets her foretellings. Like, it's like a whole... Yeah, you get it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah, get yeah. it, yeah. And yeah. two to three times a day is pretty exhausting. That's a lot. Yeah. And so some of the things she's been coming up with is there's been battles with Shanshan and Ashaman. Yeah. So th so there's questionable accuracy, know. I'd say. Like, are these really foretellings? Maybe some of them. Because, well, that's the, that's the question. Because a lot of the stuff that Nicola is... That sounds good is stuff that you could piece together with knowing like a little bit of information about the world. Right. So the fact that there are Ashaman and the fact that there are Shanshan, like just saying, hey, there's foretellings about these things doesn't mean that that's actually like a legitimate foretelling. Right. It's not very specific from what it sounds like. Well, maybe they are specific and this sharing of them mm -hmm. is not. That's And that's right? true. Like the Amaralyn imprisoned. Yeah. Right. Could mm -hmm. be. I guess so. Mm -hmm. The well, Dragon Reborn. Technically, Elida's a little bit imprisoned by Alviar, and at the moment, metaphorical. Yes, prison. metaphorical prison. Glass cage of emotion, something like that. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, Dragon Reborn doing a bunch of impossible things for sure. Totally That's actually happening. Super accurate. Yeah, and the rest of the things are just like <laughs> coincidentally to indicate that Nicola should be allowed to go faster with her lessons, and yeah. people should bring her sandwiches. It's, ooh, Nicola should get straight A's in her classes and be allowed to do more things. Ooh, Amazing. She should just be, I said, I right now. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, and that's actually kind of funny because Nicola's entire deal too has been wanting to learn faster and faster and faster, and she 
is getting all like annoyed because a yeah. Gwen, Elaine, Nynaeve are being treated different than she is, but she's also like on par with it's strength. It's called nepotism. Ugh, Deal with it, Nicola. I just <laughs> you're not a Wonder Girl. She's you not... don't get whatever treatment. She wants to be treated similar. Well, she, she wants advancement. She doesn't get to because when a Gwen was raised, Nicola wasn't her friend. Well. You got to be a Gwen's friend, then you get raised. There you go. That's, that's how it works. That's the rule. Okay. That's the rule. I mean, tell me, tell me another reason. That Nicola should be admitted. No, tell Maybe me she's another, d- no, tell me another reason that Elaine and Nynaeve actually deserve to be raised to Isaac. Oh, yeah, no, that was totally a friend situation, yeah. but, you know. That's good. Mm-hmm. And they're not technically here right now, so if they were here, maybe they would be treated the same as, you know, Nicola No, on they par. would not. No, they would be Aes Sedai because the Amulet said so. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you shouldn't have been Anyways. a little blackmailing biatch, and you maybe would move up in the ranks a little bit better. Ooh, okay. If you're on the Amulet's good side, Yeah. turns out she can just <laughs> say whatever she wants. Yeah, okay. Okay. All right. Nicola. But now, wait, Mm. there are more things to complain about. Right, right. Because Nicola has also been caught eavesdropping (laughs) on sisters and trying to peek into the traveling grounds. Probably probably to learn the weave. (laughs) And they should probably just kick her out of the camp altogether. That's right. But it's like, no, we're not doing that anymore. Well, and that's the thing is, Tiana is the mistress of novices and she's like, actually, no, we're not. She's got a lot of potential. So she's got tons. She's strong. She's got talents. Like, she can do things. We just got to pump the brakes a little bit on her. But or maybe just, like, give her a little bit of a promotion, and she'll stop being a little wiener. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. She feels undervalued. Right. Maybe value her. Yeah. yeah. No, I got I got nothing to say to that. It's mm-hmm. like, yeah, that's, that's, you could do that. Yeah. Or, or do none of those things. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. And Egwene decides not really to say anything at all about the Nicola and Arena situation, because she doesn't want to implicate herself. Yep. In anything There's like that's going on, because, you know, those stuff. are secrets also. Lots of secrets. So, yeah. Egwene gets caught up in her own thoughts and gives some compliments at everyone's skills that are improving with the Coendi are making. Yeah. And then she tells somebody something about they're doing really well, even though it's taking freaking eons to make this Coendi are, and... Yeah. What, okay. Who so, is this? so this is actually important. Okay. The, so this is kind of like the whole like last. And secret. she's like, "No, I suck at this. All I do is set the weave and wait. This, there's no improving at this." Yeah. Like, that so, chick's super negative. So. Well, that also is Nicola because she just wants mm-hmm, to. That's not Nicola. Oh, Karen. That's yeah. Ky- Karen. 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 Karen with an I. Karen. Okay. But Egwene thinks that she is the best out of everyone well, who that's makes because this because she is. No, she she is. She Shouldn't is. she just make a whole bunch? Yeah. So that's that's the thought process here too, because she's like, hey, when I make Quendiar, I turn the the iron item into Quendiar like faster than the blink of an eye, like so fast. I'm so good at it. Set the weave, and it's just like boom, it's done. done. And the next two best people are Liana and this Karen woman. But the question Karen's is, Karen's not impressed with herself. No, she's not. And Liana's like a little bit better. Karen could improve more. But Egwene is thinking to herself, oh, it's going to have to be one of them. But even Liana is barely fast enough. So it's like, what is going to have to be one of them? That's the secret. That's the question. What is going to have to be one of them? Because that's Egwene's thought process here. And then she thinks that they're going to have to do whatever's necessary because anything less is going to be a disaster for, like, the women involved in the fighting and the tower and Tar Valen because, like, clearly we have a battle coming up or something. And then she's happy that she's been able to approve Bayonin's suggestion to advance negotiations because it's going to buy time because the final thought Egwene has is this is another secret that's going to have to be kept until the time comes to reveal it to the world. Ooh. So Egwene has like this other plan, other secret, other something. And the key to it is going to be Liana or Karen. Okay. Who are also not quite fast enough to do whatever is supposed to be done. Yikes. I wish I had the brain power at this point to even <sighs> put together anything. It clearly has to do with. Somebody who's good at weaving earth, because that's like a super rare yeah. thing among women. If you recall, mm-hmm. and this has been like a super subtle thing that happened like a couple of books ago, 
Egwene was testing people for who's strong in Earth. Interesting. And we know that Egwene is strong in Earth from her yes, time with yeah. the Shanshan. Yes. She was supposed to be shipped back to Shanshan to because go. She's so because she's so good at it. Because she's so good at it. Well, and my whole thing was maybe sh- you need to be good at Earth to make an Adam. Yeah. Or something like that. Yeah, something like that. But uh, maybe it's, not. Yeah, that's more like Terangirl stuff because Elaine yeah. was able to do that, and she's Terangirl. Girl. But is Elaine good with Earth too? No, I didn't not necessarily. So. Yeah. No, that, that's I like. I don't think that was very. That the, was yeah. Terangirl specific for Earth. Yeah. Stuff. So, no, I don't know. Yeah. I guess I just need Something's, to wait. She's a cooking of something up. She might be. Yeah. yeah. She definitely. Yeah, I, I don't sure. think at this point you, we're not supposed to know. It's it's a secret. It's a secret secret. It's one of the many secrets. I know. But here's the thing about me is that people want to hear what I think. <laughs> yeah. And I got to make a wild prediction. So. All right. Lay it down. Come I on. Just, I haven't had enough time to think about it and digest it. Here's what I'm going to do. Here's my promise. Before next episode, okay. I'm going to do my notes on all of these I said I. Okay. And I'm going to come up with something that I think maybe Egwene might be planning. I'm going to I'm going to think on it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Probably something to do with the Tarvalon situation. That would make sense. We're in a Tarvalon siege right now. Well, yes, and she says that she's doing whatever's necessary because anything less would mean disaster for the women involved and the men fighting in the streets of Tarvalon. So, yeah, probably something. Yeah, it might have to do with some sort of something that will help them in their fight. Male Elida, one piece of Quendiar every day, and she'll, then eventually she she'll wind trinkets. up you in should... jail. <laughs> you remember the Dwight the Dwight Schrute one? No. Where what? that's <laughs> No, I don't. Oh man, okay, it's no. okay. No, he was like okay. That's what I actually don't remember. Yeah. That's funny. But no, okay. It's a Christmas gift situation. That's fine. Oh. Yeah. Well yeah, yeah. Until you get a new thing. <laughs> Got it. It's a nutcracker. Yeah, at the end. it's a gun. <laughs> no, no, no. He thinks it's a gun. It's not. It's a nutcracker at the end. Yeah. Okay. This has gone on long enough. I have homework now mm-hmm. on top of my normal homework. So good yeah. thing it's spring break and I have some time. Yep. A little bit more. A little bit more time to sort this out because I think this might be something worth thinking about. Yeah. It's probably important. My issue with it is we're probably not going to find out for another, like, three books. Possibly. Right? That's my issue. That's my main issue is I, I'm you're struggling gonna, to care. You're going to have to start being more careful with the whole, like, three book situation. I know. Because there's well, not that many I've books I narrowed left. it down. I used to say five books. I narrowed it down to yeah. three. Okay? Yeah. So, for the record, next episode? Two chapters. Two chapters. That's right. The episode after that, one chapter. Interesting. And okay. then back to two and chapters. And then back to two. Yeah. Okay. We're gearing up. We're yep. on the road to Jordan Con. We are. Coming up real fast. That's coming up soon. Yeah, That's really exciting a month? for us. A month. Yeah, less than that. Less than that. Three weeks. Three weeks, actually. I mm-hmm. prefer a month. I okay. know. And we're on a pretty tight recording schedule. We're recording lots because we want to be able to record an episode while we're there, hopefully. Yep. And you have a chapter in mind to do that while I we're there. Do. So I do. So we need to get caught up. Yeah. In order to be able to do that, we need to be at the exact place where we want to be when we get there. Okay. Look at us doing some planning mm. and sticking to a plan. <laughs> it's not like us at all. <laughs> Ooh, look at okay. us. So organized. Okay. Right. Right. Okay. So now, before you go ahead and do a bunch of secret scheming scheming that'll hopefully benefit the whole world, I'm going to say that this is part of the pattern now. Yeah, it's part of the pattern. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. The Wheel Weaves is hosted by Danny and Brett, edited by Danny and Brett, produced by Danny and Brett, with Passion Socks, Cody Fouts, Benjamin, Michelle O'Brien, Jonathan Reese, Jamie Young, Megan Smiley, Jared Berg, Ricky Morissette, Lance Barden, Charlie Has, Adam, Hannah Green, Marta Thier, and Michelle Forbes, with music by Audio Nautics. Now be sure to check out our Patreon page if you are interested in supporting us and the podcast. We would love to send you some Patreon exclusive merchandise as a thank you, plus you'll gain access to our episodes earlier than everyone else. 
And at the time of recording, we have over 40 bonus episodes for your listening pleasure. You can find all that and more at patreon.com slash the wheel weaves podcast. For general information about our show and information like how to send us shot glasses, how to join our discord and how to get in touch with us, visit the wheel weaves podcast.com. And as always, please be sure to give us that five star review because it really does make a huge difference in helping other people find us and make sure you tell a friend Riyadh because referrals really are the best compliment. Thanks again for listening. This really is part of the pattern now.